Hi guys, it is actually a gorgeous Monday morning out of the out of nowhere, probably for about 30 minutes here on this beautiful fall of 2021 day. We have now made it to Monday morning, <coughs> October 25th. Are we one? 2021. Are we, are we one week away from COP26? Somewhere around there. So anyway, I, I think I could just make a regular Monday morning feature called the Dire UN Report of the Week. The Dire, they, you cannot see uh, the, the headline writers, and it doesn't matter what news service it is, you cannot have a UN report anymore without the word dire. It's kind of like bus plunge. The only time you see the word plunge, they never say bus wreck, it's bus plunge. So I don't know, they, they should be able to mix it up. Dire report, catastrophic report, y you know, doomed report. Uh, anyway, so I didn't have to work hard. Uh, for today's dire UN report, the second biggest story on the planet. Uh, this is just a <clears throat> AP's uh, version. The second biggest story, of course, the first biggest story on the planet that, uh, what do they call it, that bomb cyclone, that atmospheric river slamming into uh, California and the Pacific Northwest last night. You know, Northern California and uh, the Pacific Northwest, they just can't win. There were 17 wildfires burning yesterday. At least there's no wildfires burning today. Good God Almighty. So you can draw your own dots between the first biggest story on the planet and the second biggest story on the planet, which is this is to disabuse <clears throat> any lingering notion about the corona panic saving the planet. So all of these predictions about uh, greenhouse gas concentrations falling last year. Now you got to be careful about the words concentrations and emissions. Emissions fell a little bit. But wow, greenhouse gas concentrations hit a new record in 2020. During the pandemic, the slowest economy in how many years, greenhouse gas concentrations, which tells me if, <clears throat> if the emissions dropped and the concentrations went up, maybe there's some of this stuff getting into the atmosphere now that do not come from direct emissions. This, this is just me and my uh, fourth grade math, I guess. Uh, okay, if emissions did in fact go down, which is a big if, and concentrations went up, then there's got to be another explanation. Can you say shit like the methane bomb? Can you say that the concentrations we saw in 2020 were the ones we put there in 1990. Okay, this is why I repeatedly say if greenhouse gas emissions went to zero tomorrow, greenhouse gas concentrations would continue to go up, up, up. Anyway, but with that lengthy preamble, <clears throat> let's break down the uh, latest dire UN report. This is actually the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, which is a UN organization. The World Meteorological Organization reported Monday, this morning, that greenhouse gas concentrations hit a new record high last year and at the same time increased at a faster rate than the annual average for the last decade, despite 
despite a temporary reduction during pandemic-related lockdowns. In its annual report on heat trapping gases in the atmosphere, the UN Weather Agency also pointed to, uh, to signs of a worrying new development. Yes, I don't think this is new, guys. I think it's about three years old. Parts of the Amazon rainforest have gone from being a carbon sink that sucks carbon dioxide from the air to a source of CO2, you know, putting carbon dioxide into the air due to deforestation and reduced humidity in the region, it said. This is another reason for the concentration. This is what is that humans have set in motion, uh, already set in motion, the Amazon rainforest being one of the biggest, uh, you, you know, CO2 suckers uh, on the planet, if not the biggest, now is adding two greenhouse concentrations, not subtracting them. And you better believe that this is only going to ramp up. According to the report, concentrations of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide were all above levels in the pre-industrial era before 1750 when human activities quote started disrupting earth's natural equilibrium i would say human activities started disrupting earth's natural equilibrium a hell of a lot sooner than 1750 the report's release came days before the start of a UN climate change conference in Glasgow, Scotland. Many environmental activists, policymakers, and scientists say the event known as COP26 marks an important and even crucial opportunity for concrete commitments to the target set out by the 2015 Paris Climate Accord. You know, the, the two problems being the Paris Climate Accord was an absolute joke, a complete absolute joke, and uh, which was doing nothing to save the planet. And if emissions stop tomorrow, the Paris Climate Agreement is going to go down the toilet anyway. <clears throat> this is WMO Secretary General Peter Tallis commenting on his agency's report. Quote, the Greenhouse Gas Bulletin contains a stark scientific message for climate change negotiators at COP26. At the current rate of increase in greenhouse gas concentrations, we will see a temperature increase by the end of this century far in excess of the Paris Agreement targets of one and a half to two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. We are way off track, close quote. Yes, come back in 10 years and see what kind of track we're on uh, at that point. The report draws on information collected by a network that monitors the amount of greenhouse gases that remain in the atmosphere after some quantity, quantities are absorbed by oceans and the biosphere. And this is where we're talking about the uh, Amazon rainforest no longer doing that. But we're going to build, so what we're going to do is we're going to build all of these uh, machines, these giant hoovers, these CO2 sucking hoovers to uh, replace the Amazon rainforest is what, uh, is what we're going to be doing here. We are going to replace the Amazon rainforest ecological services with a bunch of CO2 suckers, yes. Uh, <clears throat> okay, getting back to Dr. Tallis, quote, 
One of the striking messages from our report is that the Amazonian region, which used to be a sink of carbon, has become a source of carbon dioxide. And that is because of deforestation. It is because of changes of the global local climate, especially we have less humidity and less rainfall, close quote. Yep, yep, yep. The Amazon ought to move to California today. <clears throat> Oksana Tarasova, chief of WMO's Atmospheric and Environment Research Division, said the results showing the Amazon going from sink to source were a first. But he noted they were from a specific southeastern portion of the Amazon not the entire rainforest. And again, uh, I need to, uh, if I had a BS detected button, I would be hitting it here. Uh, th this debate has been going on uh, for how long, and, and if it, e even, okay, even if this is true, even if this statement is true, uh, it is not gonna be true. Uh, for much longer, and ditto for all of the other rainforests uh, on the planet. Uh, you know, th th this grasping at straws for hopium. Uh, okay, so where are we with emissions? The global average of carbon dioxide concentrations hit a new high of four. 113.2 parts per million last year. The 2020 increase was higher than the annual average over the last decade, despite, despite a 5.6% drop in carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuels due to corona panic restrictions. Okay. So emissions, if you believe this, dropped 5.6%, yet the 2020 increase was higher than the annual average over the last decade. Thales said a level above 400 parts per million, which was breached in 2015, quote, has major negative repercussions for our daily lives and well-being, for the state of our planet, and for the future of our children and grandchildren." Close quote. Human incurred carbon dioxide emissions, which result mostly from burning fossil fuels like oil and gas, or from cement production, amount to about two-thirds of the warming effects on the climate. WMO said overall an economic retreat last year because of the pan pandemic, quote, did not have any discernible impact, close quote, on the atmospheric levels of greenhouse gases and their growth rates although there was a temporary decline in new emissions. There you go. The corona panic did not have any discernible impact on the atmospheric levels of greenhouse gases and their growth rates. So uh, all of you still clinging to some hopium notion that the corona panic did anything uh, to save this planet. Hate to disabuse you of that notion. Now, maybe if global CO2 emissions did not decline by 5.6%, uh, whoopie do. Uh, and that's the other thing, uh, you know, that even in a supposed economic crisis, uh, like the corona panic supposedly was last year, even with that, 
we're talking 5.6% reduction. And, and, and what are they calling for? A, uh, what is it, a 30% reduction by 2030 and uh, net zero by, it, it ain't gonna happen, guys. It is not gonna happen. Uh, but anyway, I need to wrap up today's dire UN report. The little dog and I need to get out there and move some dirt around. We are out there creating a flood control channel. Get out there and create a flood control channel while you still can. Bye, guys.